Well, a conservative estimate on the titles would run us around six million dollars on what uh, cost on stolen cars, and uh, actually, there's no uh, way to put a value on this stuff. How about money plates? Have you picked up any any uh, counterfeit money plates? No, now we haven't found the plates. If they are in place, we found the negatives for making twenty-dollar bills up at Grapevine when we executed the search warrant up there last night. After exhaustive hours of interviews, studies, and first-hand inspection of documents and act activities covered in all the, those allegations, it is the unequivocal finding of the grand jury that the allegations brought against Mr. Ed Lofton, county clerk of Tarrant County, are senseless, ambiguous, defamatory, and completely without foundation. It will be very difficult to say otherwise in view of the statistics that were accumulated by the district. Uh, however, we still are waiting some basic proof uh, of the charges. More than 100 people filed into the Fred M. Lang Center at noon today for lunch and to sign a huge birthday card. The occasion was the 74th birthday of Mrs. Pearl C. Anderson who learned to write by making letters in the dirt and ended up as a benefactress of education and other causes. The community chest has a special reason to thank Mrs. Anderson. In 1955, she deeded a downtown tract of land valued at $325,000, which became the nest egg for the community chest trust fund. Among her other honors is the Pearl C. Anderson Junior High School in Dallas, a rare tribute to a person still living, but who has done so much for her community. Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News on the move.
when I look back on my career, I like to think that each year I've improved a little bit, and I like to think that the next few years are going to be my best years. Jack, do you feel like you can contribute enough to uh, maintain a key position after Roger is uh, reactivated or comes back? Well, that's a bridge we'll have to uh, cross when we come to it, but uh, as long as I can contribute to the team effort and as long as I'm happy and can make some sort of contribution and I go home and look in the mirror and know that uh, my head is all together and I'll be very happy. Knowing these wide receivers and other receivers in the Cowboy camp as you do, how would you compare them with other uh, or receiving cores that you have worked with? Well, of course, uh, I'm a little prejudiced towards Dick Gordon. He's been my favorite receiver for about five years now, and I guess you'd have to say that he and uh, Bob Hayes are comparable. Bob's probably a little bit faster. But uh, Dick's probably caught a few more passes the last couple of years because we've been behind in so many games I've had to throw more. But uh, I think uh, the overall picture as far as the Cowboys receiving core is a little greater than most teams. They're too deep at every position. You get Allworth and Sellers and Hayes and Parks and Truex and Ditka. Uh, you certainly can't be hurting in the passing game. All you got to do is throw the ball. They should be there. It was a tremendous experience for me. Uh, towards our time, I, I was really shattered. Uh, the fact that old in Moscow Dynamo 0 0 kind of overrode me. I managed to get myself together at half time and realized that it was really happening. Well, could you talk about some of the different saves you made? Which ones meant more to you? Which were the toughest ones? I think the toughest save I made was when Ray Bloomfield headed against our bar. And I saw the ball come down off the bar, and I saw this Russian's head out the corner of my eye. And I just took off. I flung myself as far as I could. And I just managed to point the ball off his head, and I thought it was probably one of the best saves I've ever made. I think the crowd would probably agree with you because it, you, those things normally don't happen, do they? That no, type of thing. No, they don't. Uh, one fortunate part about it last night was the crowd was tremendous. The crowd was behind us. And I'm not only speaking for myself, but for the boys, we really appreciate the fantastic attendance that turned up at Texas Stadium. It was wonderful to play in front of such a tremendous crowd atmosphere. What, what was your uh, type of uh, attack? I mean, what was your game plan? Were you going to kind of hold them the first half and then hope to wear them down and maybe to attack toward the end as you did? Yeah, I think our game plan was to hold them, you know, and we were going to try and score on a breakaway. But as the game went on, we became more confident and we, in the second half, we had a couple of good chances. And we really, you know, we took the game to them at times, although whenever they got the ball, you know, it was, they could have scored on numerous occasions. Just thank, thank the Lord they got such a good defense in front of me. Were there any errors that you noticed on their part that kept them from, go, from scoring? I don't want to, was there a bad shot or two? I don't want to take anything away from you because you played yeah, such I, a fine game. Yeah, I was game. surprised really. Uh, there was a couple of times when I anticipated shots and I was down on the ground and I thought, you know, they, they could have put the ball anywhere and the ball just seemed to come into my hands. I know that, you know, we've got players like Jurassi, uh, Phil Tinney and Renshaw that can sell a goalkeeper dummy and, and make him look a fool. And I was selling myself at times, literally selling myself. The ball was still coming into my hands. I was surprised. A 15-year-old student at Trinity High School in Euless says he is going to rock in a rocking chair for seven days, a total of 168 hours. He is Paul Camola Jr. of 1301 Cliffwood. Paul said he is rocking along under the eagle eyes of friends who double as official observers because of a dare from a friend. He says he uses no special rocking technique, but that he has practiced rocking in his sleep. Paul will take breaks for necessary visits to the men's room, but that time will be deducted by the official observer. By this time next Friday, Paul's only ambition will probably be to go off his rocker. On the other side of the county in West Fort Worth, four youngsters are attempting to seesaw 100 hours. Steve Maxey, Rick and Ken Kirsch, and Mike Mullenix say it should be a first because they have found no record of a double seesaw record. Steve, who helped build the squeaky seesaw dubbed Betty Lou, said they just needed something to do, and he hopes it goes in the record book. The seesaw started yesterday and hope to make it until Monday night, that is, if the Kirsch brother's mother lasts. One thing is for sure, there's good rocking tonight at the Camola home in Euless while the Kirsches are having their ups and downs. Jim Green, Channel 8 News on the Move in Tarrant County.